you guys have gone through the the assessment on your own and now we're just going to confirm if what you have done is it correct or not um <clears throat> so we going to just go into it welcome uh, without wasting any time because we only have one hour 30 minutes today so we're gonna do question by question and all that the five assessments they follow the same format so if you know how to answer one you should be able to answer the rest of them so i'm only going to show you how to answer assessment a but with your with your help as well so we will have the discussions and then you you should be able to go on your own and answer assessment b c d and e on your own okay so the first question is consider the following table with two variables x and y and use the following information to answer question number one to question number four so it means the same table we will use it for question number one two and three and four remember with linear regression you can save a lot of time instead of calculating manually you can use your calculator and put your calculator to set mode and remember that the function for the straight line it's y is equals to or y hat is equals to b0 plus b1x remember that but on your calculator your uh, function will be y is equals to a plus bx something like that on your calculator or it might be small small letter a it depends on what kind of a calculator you are using so it might be A or B or Y. F is equal to A plus B X. So we know that for A, it's the same as your B0. For B will be the same as B1. And we know this is your this is your intercept. And this is your slope. <clears throat> That's what we know. So now the question is asking you to calculate the slope, which is this first question. What we do, we can put our calculator to state mode. Depending on the kind of a calculator you are using, remember different people use different calculator, you need to know your steps. So I'm going to use Casio for my calculations for today. So if you have a sharp, uh, financial calculator or a sharp scientific right view calculator you can use that it's also follow the same concept so the first step we do is to put our calculator to state mode on this one my state mode is on button number three then i press three and i can see there is number two which looks like a y is equals to a x plus b x so i'm going to press number two and i get this table i'm going to start First, by putting the value of x, which is easy, by saying 1 equal, and then I say 2 equal, 3 equal, 4 equal, 6 equal, 8 equal, 9 equal, 11 equal. And I should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight values, there are 8. Then now I'm ready to capture the value of y. So I go to, oh, sorry. I'll be on the calculator, not using the arrow from my PC. So then I go to the right with the right uh, arrow. And then I press the up arrow. Up, 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 up until I get to number one. When I get to one, I can start capturing. And remember, you need to make sure that you align the values. One needs to go with seven. So it will be seven equal. 
then you say 11 equal 15 equal 18 equal 20 equal 18 equal 25 equal 21 equal and it should align so i have all the values on my calculator then you can press the ac button now i'm ready to do any calculations that needs to follow so now i know i need to calculate b1 and i know that my b1 is my slope so therefore it means i will have on my calculator i will need to calculate it by pressing the value of b so that will be the capital letter b that i will see the value of b so to get to the value of b on your calculator if you are using the sharp uh, the casio it will have the state uh, function on button number one or button number two depending on the type of calculator you are using those who are using the scientific calculator once your calculator is on a state mode and you, on those who are using the, the the sharp calculator you will press the line you will select where it says state mode and you will press the line because we're going to be doing the regression live and then you will capture the data by following the step uh, we did the steps previous weeks uh, when we were doing the linear regression then once we are ready to calculate the slope you're going to press shift and then press the stat button and it takes you to reg which is on button number five and then you press five and there are my values a b is on a is on button number one and b is on button number two so i'm going to press two for b because that's what i am looking for and then i press equal sign and the answer i get is 1.376 which is that answer that's how easy it is easy simple to do Going to question number two. Remember, it says one till four, so we done with one. Go to two. Two says calculate b zero. Remember now, y is equals to a plus b x, which is y is equals to b zero plus b one. We calculated B1. So now we need to calculate B0. So it means we need to calculate 1. So you can clear your calculator and go back again. Shift, set, 5 for reg. And we're going to press 1 for the intercept, which when I press equal, and the answer I get is 9,3. 3, 3 because it's two decimals so therefore it means the answer is option number one as well a is our answer going down to the next exercise which is exercise three it says calculate the coefficient of determination now, the other thing you must remember on your calculator, you only have coefficient of correlation. Once you have your R on your calculator, then you need to press the X squared button so that you can get R squared. So now, if I go AC on my calculator, since I'm using the same data, which is stored into the calculator, makes my life easy. Shift, and then you press 1. And you go back to reg, which is five. And number three relates to R. And when I press three, and I press equal, and that is my coefficient of correlation. And with coefficient of correlation, which is 0 0.86, I'm not looking for coefficient of correlation. I'm looking for coefficient of determination. I need to press the X squared button 
And when I press the X squared button and I press equal sign, the answer I get is 0, 0,734. And that is the answer we are looking for. That is question number three. To answer question number four, we go down. And you need to make a correction on question number four. This is for relation. It was just a mistake on this A. What is the value of your coefficient of correlation? And we've calculated it before. So since I I can just press the square root to get back, and that will get me, get me back to my coefficient of correlation. Or I can go back and do the same steps. Step one, and I press five for rank, and I press three, and I press equal, and 0, 0.857 is the correct answer. That's how easy it is to answer the question. But I just want to, I just want to see if I can use the K, the, the sharp calculator, but it might take longer. And now you're going to be seeing what is happening on my PC since I have so many things happening here. Um, Open one of them. Let's hope it will open. Ah, it does open. Okay. Let's do this way. Let's use the sub the the sharp calculator. One two. So we'll use the sharp calculator, but this calculator looks different to the rest of the other calculators that you have. Um, so those who have the financial calculators, the values are on the uh, buttons. Uh, you will notice that all your values that you are looking for, they will be visible for you on the button in green, and you will just press the shift button. So <clears throat> now we need to take uh, this to uh, state mode, you press mode and you press one for state and then you will press one A plus B X. Um, the other calculators on your one, it will say line. Instead of saying A plus B X, it will say line. And for my one, I want that and it gives me the table, which looks almost exactly the same as what you have. So I press one, and I press equal, and two. So the steps on this calculator are almost the same as the, the case your calculator. Three equal, four equal, six equal, eight equal, nine equal, 11 equal. Then I must go to the top again on the Y, Go right at the top, go find seven equal, 11 equal, 15 equal, 18 equal, 20 equal, 18 equal, 25 equal, 21 equal, and I have kept all the values. And then I can go on and off my calculator, and my this calculator shows that I am in state mode. Now I'm ready to calculate any of the values. So since I am on the coefficient of correlation, I can start with that. But on this calculator, it will give me all the values that I want by just pressing alpha, and you press the start button and it will tell you whether you want to see the statistic or the regression and i want the regression which is button number one and all the values are here 
And if you can see here, I have my R, which is 0, 0,8857, which is the same. And if I go back to the others, uh, this was coefficient of determination, and you won't find um, on this one, you will be able to see your coefficient of determination, and there it is 0, 0,734, and that's what you select. Then you go up, and I should be able to see my B1. I went up too, too much. Uh, my B1, which is my B, is 1,37. And my B0, which is my A, it's 9,33. As you can see, some calculators are easy to, to do the calculations from using them. Those who are using the scientific calculation, or those who are using the financial calculation, I will write it down now if I can do it all the steps in my class. Let's see if I can remember all the steps. So to answer all the questions that we have done, I'm just I this one day is being late. Somewhere where I can write the steps for you. So you're going to uh, press the mode. So this is for uh, the sharp financial calculator or uh, those who are using the D.A.L. So you first need to press the mode button. Then once you press the mode button, you will press one for set. And then you will press one for line. And your calculator will be in set one mode. Now you need to capture your data. So different calculator captures data differently. So those with a DAL calculator, you will use, when you capture your calculator, the STO and the M plus button. You will use both of those buttons. Those who are using a financial calculator, which is a sharp, Business Financial Calculator EL738, you will use the bracket X, Y, and the E and T button. So when, when we put in these values, you will say one, and then you will press, I will start with the financial calculator. Then you will press the X and Y button, and then you will press seven, and then you will press the E and T button. So those are the buttons you press. So you say one, and then you press the X and Y, and then you press the E and T. Those who are using the DL, you will say one, and then you will say STO button, and then you will press seven, and then you will press the M plus next to each other they are next to one another then you press the m plus and then you continue like that so you'll say two and then you press that button and then say 11 and then press that then you go three x and y and you say 15 and then you say that you do the same with the sto until you've captured all the values on your calculator now, once you have captured your values on your calculator, you must remember as well. So every time you capture your value, it will say data set one or data set two, data set three, until you get to data set eight. Once you are done, then you can press the on and off button or the AC button, whichever it appears on your calculator. 
once you have captured all your values, you can just press the on, on and C button. Now you are ready to capture the to, uh, to, to answer the question. You must also remember to write for yourself y is equals to b0 plus b1x. It's very important that you write that so that you don't mix match the values. And you must also write what your calculator looks like. So on, on both the calculator, you will have an, a small a plus small b x. And since you are using different calculators as well, you have to clarify. So those with the uh, financial calculator, you will, you will press for A, it's on the division side. For B, it's on the delete side. So this A is on the division sign and B is on the delete. And this is for the sharp. For the Casio, uh, not the Casio, the sharp DAL. So you will also do the same. So you will have A plus BX, which corresponds to B0 plus B1X. Remember that you will also have the same. So on your one, your A is on the close bracket, is on the open bracket, and your B is on the close bracket. So when you press A for B0, for example, to answer that question that we have now in front of us, which is B1. So you will press the alpha. So yours, you will press, press alpha, and then press either the close bracket or the open bracket. The same, you will press alpha, either the division or the close bracket. To calculate the regression, which is your R for both calculators, R on, on the GAL, it is on the division side. So you will press alpha division, it will give you R. And to get R squared, you just need to press the X squared button. For those who are using the financial calculator, to press R, it is on the closed, uh, on the open bracket, and to uh, to get to R squared, you will need to press the X squared button. And remember where your X squared button is on the dot. So yours, you will press second function, not shift, second function to get to the X squared. It is second function and dot. It will get you to the X squared button. So you just need to know your calculator and you need to know how to use your calculator. So that will help you to answer the questions like the ones we just did. So I just summarized question number one, number two, number three, number four, for all the four calculators that I can help with. If you're using any other calculator, which is not the ones that I gave hints to, like an HP, Hey, I don't know how to help you. I don't also own a manual, but I can I can find the manual and email it to you. You just need to let me know if you're using any of the calculator that I didn't explain today. Okay. So that that is question number one, two, three, and four. Now let's look at how we answer some of the questions in the exam. So sometimes in the exam, you might not get all like a table where you are given X and Y values, but they will give you formulas like this. So when they give you formulas like this, it becomes a little bit tricky because <clears throat> you cannot use any of the functions I just showed you. You need formula. So you will need to go and get the formula sheet from your exam, uh, your tutorial letter. 
can open the tutorial later. And you know, your tutorial letter doesn't come with formulas. Uh, I will need to open the past exam paper. So just give me a sec. I must go to my download. Probably I should get one exam paper there. There we go. Can open this one. Okay. Go to the end of the exam paper and I must look for the values that they are saying we must use. So here is B1. Let's go to the question. Ask, calculate B1. That's what they are saying. And based on this, it says B1 is your sum sum x and y. So I need to go find the sum sum x and y, which is that formula. The sum of x and y minus the sum of x times the sum of y divided by n. That's what I need to write at the top. So this is the sum x and y minus the sum of x times the sum of y divided by n. Divide by, because I need to go back to do the bottom part, which is the sum of x. The sum of x is given by that, which is the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared divided by n. So this is the sum of x squared minus the sum of x, everything squared, divided by n. So now it's the matter of substituting the values. So they've given you the sum of x, the sum of y, the sum sum, the sum of x squared, and the sum of y squared. We don't need to use the sum of x squared because this formula doesn't require it as yet. So substituting into the formula, we need sum of sum sum, sum of x and y, which is 1778 minus the sum of x is 75. Uh, I just want to go back to the formula. I need to check. OK, I wrote them right. 75 times the sum of y, 225. Divide by n, how many they are. Huh. The sample size of 10, so that is our n. They tell us 10 is our sample size. Everything divided by, and here I need to say everything divided by the sum x squared, which is 645 minus the sum of x, which is 75 squared, divide by 10. Now, when it comes to this kind of complex calculation, I rely on my Casio because it has the fraction capability, so but I need to get out of the state mode and go back to a normal calculator. I know that I need to do my fraction since I'm, and then at the top, it's 1778 minus, and I must do my top, times 75 times, Two two five close bracket go down to the denominator which is ten. Then I must go down to the bottom one and say six four five minus. So you will have to do this step by step so that you get the answer correct. Um, I, unless if you have a case here, then you must also make sure that you. You do it correctly. So this is 75 squared 
oh, before I do 75 squared, I need to apply the fraction. And this is 75 squared. And I must go down to the denominator and find 10 and go to the end and then press equal. And since my calculator is cash, it gives me as a fraction because I was working with fraction. I just need to press the SD, which says change from uh, one unit to a decimal or something like that. And when I press that, this means there are many other values following. But since I'm only interested in the two decimals, so I can see there. Uh, if I round it off to two decimal, the answer here will be equals to one comma one o, and that will be the answer. Any question? Let's see. Are you posting any questions or comments or queries or anything? Are you saying anything? Okay. Any question? So far, so good. Okay. Great. No question yet, ma'am. Just happy yeah. that you show you showed us how to uh, um, calculate the fractions. Yes. Yeah. So. Uh, this is if you have a case your calculator with this fraction, uh, this fraction button. If you don't have that, then you will have to calculate this manually. Like if, for example, you are using uh, the other calculator, like the like the sharp the sharp calculator, like this. It doesn't come with the uh, what do you call it? the fractions. So you will have to do the steps one by one manually. So if I go back to the table. So you will say you you will probably start this side before you even do the minus. So you will say 75 times 225 equals and then divide by 10 and get the answer for the question. And once you have the answer, you write it down. So this will be 1778 minus 16875. That's what you will write. And then you go to the bottom, you do the same. You will go to the bottom and say 645 minus, and then you say uh, 75. And then you press the X squared button. And say equal and then divide that by 10 and say equal and it will give you the answer and uh, this is 5 6 2.5 uh, 6 2.5 so if you have this kind of a calculator also you can use the change it changes from a fraction to a depends on the type of a calculator as well. So now I have it as a decimal. Now I can just calculate this. So you go to the top and say 1778 minus 16875 equal, and you will get your answer as, I think, my calculator didn't calculate right. Let me just double check. Why am I getting a negative value? 75 times 225 equals 16. Oh, it did, I didn't divide by, 10. So, my by 10. so it should be 16.5. Uh, 16 Sorry, not. Not what I have. Oh, sorry, I see that now. It was 0. 0.5. So this will be uh, 1, 
seven seven eight minus one six eight seven point five equals okay will be equals ninety point five divide by and we divide by six four five minus five six two point five equals eighty two point five and then we can take ninety point five and divide that by eighty two point five and we get the same as that so it might take you longer if you have those kind of other calculators okay moving on to question number six since this was five or oh, six it says calculate b0 so we've calculated b1 if we go to the formulas if you look at the formula it says for b0 we need to use the mean of y minus b1 times the mean of x so we write the formula down it's uh, sorry for b0 it's the mean of y minus b1 times the mean of x we've calculated b1 remember that that is the answer we got so we're going to use that and we know what the mean of y is because we are given the mean of uh, we're given x and y so we can calculate the mean of y will be the sum of x uh, the sum of y it will be the sum of y divided by n and the mean of x will be the sum of x divided by n that's all what we need to do. So we know this is 75 divided by 10 because there are 10. And this will be, ah, gosh, why am I using the wrong values? And uh, this is y is 225. And this is x, 5 divided by 10. So to calculate that, I can just put it into the calculator and say 75 divided by 10, which just gives me 7.5. So this will be 7.5 minus 1.10 times the mean of x, which is, oh gosh. And again, using wrong values. At the wrong place. So this will be 7.5. That will be 20, uh, 22.5. So now you just need to solve the equation. So this will be 22.5 minus open bracket 1. 1.10 times 7.5 close bracket equals and change the values 14.25 I think it's because I used 1.1 let's use the whole value that we got for which was one point zero nine because I dropped off some of the uh, some of the um, decimals that's why I'm not matching it hundred percent so if I would use I then write the whole value that I saw it was 
we can calculate it quickly because we have the answer was 90.5 divided by 82.90.5 divided by 82.5 equal, um, okay, this one keeps only four decimal. Uh, let's see if we use the four decimals, the three decimals, sorry. Uh, so this will be 1,096. So if we do it that way, then we'll have. It's basically recurring on 969696. Nine, nine, six. Yeah, yes. 22.5 minus into bracket. 1.0966. You're saying it's 969696. Correct. Okay, I can leave it at five decimal, it's fine. Multiply that with 7.5, close bracket, and there we go. So if you if you cut short the decimals, uh, you might not get the right answer because you are dropping off some of the important decimals uh, or chopping off some of the important decimals. So you need to keep all of them or you need to keep at least maximum of five. It makes it easier. Uh, that is question six. Go into question seven, which also still uses the sum sums some measures. So question seven, they are asking us to calculate the coefficient of determination. So now we need to go and find R squared. And R squared, that is the formula, which is the sum of the, uh, the sum, uh, sum square regression divided by the total variation. And the sum square regression, that is the formula, which is very long. I won't remember it even if I want to. So let me write it down, then I will go write it on the other side. It is B0, B0, sum of Y plus B1. Sum xy minus sum y squared divided by n. Okay, to we'll go write it all up. And I must also find the sum square, the total variation. The sum square total, which is total variation, which is given by your sum y squared minus the sum y squared divided by n. Okay, go back there. We need to write this formula down, which is r squared is equals to, and it was b0 times sum of y plus B1, sum xy minus sum y squared divided by n, everything divided by your sum y squared minus your sum y squared divided by n. Substituting B0, we need to go back to our formulas now. B0 was, or oh, B0 is right here in front of us, it's 14. Yeah, 14.2728. I'm going to four of them that I see in front of me. Sum of Y, which is times 225. 
plus B1, uh, we said it was 1,09696 times our sum XY, which is 1778 minus the sum Y, which is 225. 225 squared divide by 10, everything, divide by, let's take it back up a little bit, sum y squared, sum y squared, 5, 7, 7, 3, you must pay attention to the formula, don't get confused with sum y squared and, uh, and sum y into brackets, uh, uh, bracket squared, two different measures. Uh, minus sum y is 225. Divide by n uh, 10. Oh, we need to square this. It's 225 squared. Okay, so now I will do this one uh, step by step. I prefer to use the this one because this can keep all the decimals. Oh, so fourteen point two seven two eight times two two five equals. Three two one one point three eight, right? Okay, then one point zero nine six nine six times one one. Uh -uh. Where's my delete? Okay, backspace, one, seven, seven, eight, equals, plus, one, nine, five, zero, point, three, nine, four, eight, eight, minus, two, two, five, Squared equals divide by ten equal five zero six two point five. I think if they give you the table, it might make it easier in the exam than when they give you all these sum sums to calculate. It takes longer. Unless if you have the cash your calculator, I'll keep on going to the mode button. Okay, so at the bottom we have five seven seven three minus. Well, we calculated this. I'm not going to repeat it again. It's the same as what we did, which is five zero six two point five, which is the same as what we calculated there. So I'm not going to repeat it. So the top part, three, two, three, two, one, one point three eight plus remember both mass addition and subtraction have the same priority. We can work from left to right. So I can just add all of them and subtract whatever is on the other side. One nine five zero point three nine four eight eight minus five zero six two point five equals. I 
anti-gate here is 99.27488 divided by 5773 minus 5062.5 equals 710.5. Now we need to apply the division. Nine nine point two seven four eight eight divided by seven one zero point five equals. Since we are rounding off to two to four decimals, let's see. That will be actually we rounding off to three decimals. That is the three decimal. The number to the right is bigger than six. So bigger than five. So we add one. So that will be zero. That will be four. And that will be one. So therefore it means. The answer is option number E. Okay. So we did. We did the coefficient of determination. Now we need to do coefficient of correlation. Also, coefficient of correlation. I would say, in my own view, if I have coefficient of determination, which is R squared, I can find coefficient of correlation, which is R. I can take the square root of R squared, and this will be the square root of 0, 0,1. 140 that I have there. Or I just take the answer as I have the answer here and press the square root and press equal because it will give me the square root of the answer and I will have my answer as option number A. That's the easiest way of doing it instead of going and using the formula. And this is my lazy. Uh, what do you call that? My lazy head at this point, because I feel like I have been doing so many calculations. My head is spinning. But if you want to use the formula, this is the formula. So this is the formula to calculate the coefficient of correlation, which takes the covariance of your x and y values divide by the standard deviation of your x value and the standard deviation of multiplied by the standard deviation of your y. So these are the formulas you will need to use in order to substitute into the formula. Also, very, very huge, 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 huge formula to use. So I'll have to write them down. Even though I've shown you the shortcut, I still in case in the exam, they don't ask you to calculate the coefficient of determination, but they ask you to calculate coefficient of correlation. And I haven't shown you, it will be my fault. So let me show you how to calculate it. One over N minus one times the sum of X, Y minus the sum of X, the sum of Y divided by N. And because we're multiplying, so it will be 1 over n minus 1 sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared divided by n. And I can repeat the same for the y. I don't have to write the formula again. So how do we then do it? Okay, let me remove this and use the formula. 
So now we need to calculate our R, which is one over N minus one times the sum of your X and Y minus sum of x times sum of y divide by n. Close bracket. Everything else divide by uh, the standard deviation, which is 1 n um, times the sum of x squared minus sum of x squared divided by n times okay let me use a multiplication because then i'm gonna use the multiplication because i need to repeat the n minus one times the sum of y squared minus sum of y everything squared divided by n so that is the formula now substituting into this formula will be one over ten minus one times the sum of x y it's one seven seven eight minus the sum of x and y uh, sum of x and sum of y which is 75 times 225 divided by n everything else one over 10 minus one times the sum of x squared is 645 minus the sum of x 75 squared divided by 10 multiply by 1 over n o oh, 1 over 10 minus 1 times the sum of x y squared is 5773 minus Ah, two, two, five over uh, squared over 10. Some of these values, we've calculated them before. H, you have them in front of you so that I don't have to repeat them again and again and again. So this will be one over nine times, and I feel like we did this, one, one, seven, seven minus, didn't we do it somewhere? We did it here. 1778 minus 75 times 25 minus da da da. We did it here and we found that it was 90.5. So we're just going to take 90.5. I'm not going to recalculate everything. So whatever it's also, oh, this is divided by 10. This we did calculate. We found that it was 90.5. Not divide by. Sorry. It's because I'm running out of space. I'm going to save time. So this I can multiply by 1, which is 90.5 divided by 10 divided by uh, 10 minus 1 is 9. So I can have it like that. Divide by, and I can do the bottom. The only thing that I we didn't calculate is this, uh, the x one for the y. I'm also going to just go grab the y value. We did calculate it. It is this one at the bottom, which is five seven seven three minus twenty two squared divided by ten. We did calculate it, and we found that was equals to seven ten point five. So times seven ten point point five divide by nine because I'm just going to divide by nine on this. So this is divide by and we just need to calculate 
the x for x. Let's do that. Uh, it will be, I'm going to revert back to Casio because it makes my life easy. Uh, what happened to my Casio now? That's a sharp. Okay, got it back. So this is six four five minus right uh, at seventy five squared divided by ten. Eighty two point five. So this will be eighty two point five divided by nine. Oh, I am going to use Casio. Um, so I'll start with the first bigger bracket uh, fraction. Then at the top, I must also do a fraction, which is 90.5 divided by 9, divided by 9. Then I go to the bottom. I must do a fraction. And it must be 82.5 divided by 9. And I must go to the end and multiply this by another, another fraction, which will be 710.5 divided by 9. As you can see, this is the same as what I have here. I could have included all this, the, this step into the calculator and then press equal and I would get the answer. So I need to go to right to the outside and I press equal, change the value and the answer I get is not the answer that is there. It says it's 0, 0,013. Three. There is no answer like that. Somewhere, somewhere we got it wrong. Uh, so lazy to calculate all of them. So let's let's use the calculator for its purpose. Okay, so I'm going to only do the top part and then I will do the the second part and then do the third part and get the answers. I'm not going to do all of them at once in one shot. So let's see. I'm going to do one by one. So let's start with the top part. The top part, which is sum, sum, x, y. Did I substitute right? x and y is 170 and sum x 75 times 225. We, we substituted right. This is 645 minus 75 squared divided by 10. We substituted right. 5773 is y squared, sum of y squared, 225 squared, 10. Okay. So let's do the top part fraction 1 over 10 times, oh, not there, go out. Multiply by, oh, actually, I don't even have to put the multiply. Can use the bracket, which is 1778 minus fraction, open bracket, 75 times 2 to 5, close bracket, go down to 10. And then Sorry, go out and close my bracket. Sorry, ma'am. One yes. over 10 is minus one. Minus oh, one. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Let's go there. Let's go fix it. Minus one. Yes. 
right to the end to close the bracket. So close the bracket and then press equal. Do the change. Okay, so this is way different to what I had previously. Um, which is equals to the top part is equals to 10.05555. I don't know how many fives. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, three, four, five, five. I'm going to stop it right there. Divide by, and then I will do the, the other one. One divided by 10 minus one, go out, open bracket, six, four, five minus 75 squared, uh, delete, 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 fraction, 75 squared divided by 10. No, let's use the thingy, close bracket, equal. Huh. 9.16666. I'm going to stop it there with seven. There are enough. Multiply by, and then we do the same. One divided by one zero minus one point bracket five seven seven three minus fraction two two five squared divide by ten and close bracket equal. Times seven eight nine four 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 four. Seven eight point four 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 four. Okay, so now we can use fraction ten point zero five 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 five. Six divided by nine point one six 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 seven times seven eight point nine eight four 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 doesn't matter how many fours, which is the same as what I had previously which is not on the answer sheet. And which is not what we got when we were multiplying, when we convert. Remember, if I use this, I get, that is the answer. If you take the square root, of zero point one four zero equal zero comma three seven. So it means the formula that we are using for the coefficient of correlation. I don't think the formula works well. I don't think that is the right formula. Let me just double check. Where did we go wrong? Oh, sorry. Yes, my bad. This is the variance. We need to take the square root of the answers. Sorry, my bad. Ha. Now I know where we're going wrong. Uh, when we get to... Sorry, we need to fix the our 
formula. Uh, this we need to take the square root and that should be the square root. So they both have to be the square root. So when we get here, we need to take the square root of this answers. All of them is to be the square root. You just need to fix that part, the bottom part. So let's do that. Uh, You just need to fix the bottom part, only the bottom part, and say the square root of nine point one six 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 seven. Then go out, put the multiplication, then do the square root again of 78.94. And go out and press equal. Yay, there we go answer is number one all we just need is you miss one thing you get everything wrong so we needed to put the square root because the question was that this is the variance and the formula uses the standard deviation the formula we used was for the variance apologies for that and i think we can call it the quick for today and then tomorrow we will continue and do the last one which is the interpretation oh let's see we can actually do that and then tomorrow we do as assessment two we have eight minutes left so we can still do the last bit so with question number nine it says consider the regression equation they gave you the regression equation, which is y is equals to b1x. So this is y is equals to b1x plus b0. And they also give you the coefficient of determination, which is r squared. All you need to remember is the coefficient of determination tells you whether the total variation is of x explain what happens to y. Ne? That's what you need to remember. Then the other thing uh, you also need to remember is with the coefficient of determination, you can find the coefficient of correlation, which tells you the strength. So both R squared and also the value of your B1 will tell you what's happening with your data. So since it's positive, it says when one unit increases, it will increase by that much. So if, if we increase by one unit, so it means if we replace X by one, what will be the increase in the value of your Y win? That's all what you need to also know. So if we go through each statement, remember the statement says choose which one is correct. Number one, I said, the variation or the coefficient of determination tells you what total variation in the value of y has explains what happens to the value of your y. Ne? That's why. Sorry. The total variation in value of y can be explained by what is happening in the values of your x, something like that. So if you remember that, so how we interpret the coefficient of determination, we say, uh, if it's 50%, we'll say 50% of the variation in y 
uh, in the values of y are explained by the values of x. That's how we ex we explain it. So now let's read each statement and make sure that we understand which one might be the right one. So I'll, I'll actually start at the top. So number one, it says 13%, 13.97% uh, of total variation in X can be explained by Y. We are not predicting X, we're predicting Y, so we cannot explain what happens in X by using the value of Y, so it needs to be vice versa. This needs to be there, that needs to be there. So the total variation in Y can be explained by the variation of X or the values of X. So then it means number one is not correct. Number two, the value of y, when x is equals to one, is equals to that. And that is what I explained. So if we substitute y is equals to 1.1, if we substitute by value of one, what will be your value of y? 14.27. You can take your calculator and calculate that and see how much it will be. So let's do that. It is 1.1 1 .1 times 1 is 1. So times 1, it will be 1 plus, because that is an addition, plus 14.27 equal. And change the value, change the value. 15.37, so the, when the value, the value of y is when x is equals to one is equals to that. That is correct because we just calculated it. When x is equals to one, the value of y will be equals to 15.37. And you can stop right there. You don't even have to continue, but just for interest sake, a unit increase in the values of x in a decrease in the values of y. Since the slope is positive, it can never be a decrease, it can only be an increase. So it means if a unit increase happens in the values of x, there will also be a, a positive increase in the values of y. And we just uh, saw that because if x is zero, y will be 14. So if I increase by one, uh, it will increase to 15.37. If I increase by two, if I increase the value of X by two, it will also increase. It will not decrease. The value of Y, when X is equals to one, is equals to 14.7. We just did this, so this is not correct. Remember, some of them, we just did them now, now. We know that that is not correct. That is not correct. That is not correct because this, we calculated it. We knew that it was 15.7. When the values of X is one, it should be 15.7. It will be 14.27 only if X is equals to zero. A unit increase in X is an increase in Y by 14.27. It cannot be by 14.27 because it's positive and the slope is 1.1. So the unit increase will also have to include the value of your slope. So this also is incorrect. And that's how you will answer the question. We have one minute and that one minute, I can just use it to answer the last press, the last question. The last question is about coefficient of correlation and coefficient of determination. Now, if you look at each statement, just says if coefficient of correlation is zero, what will be coefficient of determination? So we know that coefficient of correlation is R, coefficient of determination is R squared. So it means if this is one, therefore, if I take X squared of one, this will be equals to one. If I take, if my R squared is zero, this will also be zero. But if my x, my r is 0 0.36, what will be my r? It will be the x squared of 
0.36. That's all what they want you to do. So you just take the value and take the square the square of it. So 0.36, I'm just making an example. And you press the x squared and say equal, and that will give you 0 0.1 to, let's say, 1.3. And that's all what they want you to, to find, to check. So here it says, when a coefficient of correlation is equal to zero, then the coefficient of determination will be equal to zero. But the question says, which one will be incorrect? We've dealt with this one and I did it. I said, when it, this is zero, this will be zero. So that uh, is, this is correct, actually, in terms of what we're looking for. We're looking for the incorrect one, but we know that this is correct. When the coefficient of correlation is one, we dealt with this one as well as an example. If it's one, so if I if R is one, therefore X squared not eleven. If R is one, then X squared will be equals to one. So this will be correct. When the coefficient of correlation is minus one, so let's say is minus one then the coefficient of determination is what? So let's take the x squared of minus one. No man, sometimes the calculator doesn't recognize that that is a one sum, so you need to put it in bracket when you do the x squared. So minus one squared minus one. is equal to one. So that is also correct. Number two, it says, when the coefficient of correlation is 0 0.5, the coefficient of determination is 0 0.5. So you can test that. 0 0.5 squared equal change value 0 0.25. 0 0.25. So that is the incorrect one. The coefficient of correlation is the square root of your coefficient of the coefficient of correlation is the square root of the coefficient of determination. Yes, because, no, yes, because if I have coefficient of determination and I want to find R, I will have to put the square root of coefficient of determination so that I can calculate my R. That means that is correct. The only one that is not correct is D. And that is chapter 11 in a nutshell. Tomorrow we will, continue, we will do uh, self-assessment B together. Now, since today I was the only one mostly talking, so tomorrow you will be the one doing the exercises because now I've shown you how to do it, then tomorrow you can do assessment B. All the assessments have the same question, like they, they are almost the same. So for example, question number one, question two, question three, and four, you will be getting a table. It will be asking you to calculate B1, B0, coefficient of determination, coefficient of correlation. They are all the same. Question four, uh, five, six, seven, they will be asking you to use the sum, the sum square measures to calculate. And then the last two questions, they will just be theoretical questions on coefficient of determination and coefficient of correlation. So for two hours, you should be able to do the exercise. I will see you tomorrow when you do assessment B. Then once you are done with assessment B, you can do assessment C, D, and E on your own because it follows the same. You have all the, 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 the skills now. It follows the same. So take a chance, do all of them when you have time. Then I will see you tomorrow. Thank you guys for coming through. If you have any question, you can ask. If not, then we can call it a quip. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Good night all. Thank you for everything. Good night.